Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Welcome to the new lecture of data communication and networking. So today we are going to study about analog transmission, chapter number five. So what is analog transmission, and how we can convert a digital signal to analog signal? So digital analog conversion. So the thing is, digital analog conversion is the process of changing one of the characteristic of an analog signal based on the information in a digital data once we have a digital data let's see once we have a digital data let's say we have one zero one zero and we want to transmit this data in the form of analog in the form of analog so for conversion of a digital data to analog we need to be apply some methods so the method we, which we, we will apply on it so that will be uh, amplitude shift key frequency shift key phase shift key and quadrature amplitude modulation so we will apply these four to five methods to convert uh, digital data to analog signal so digital to analog conversion for digital analog conversion we need to be specify a carrier frequency which is denoted by fc this is called a carrier frequency so digital data need to be carried on an analog signal one thing because when we know we want to transmit our digital data in the form of a analog signal so we need to be carry analog signal the second is a carrier signal which we uh, say frequency fc perform the function of transporting the digital data in an analog form so this carrier frequency will help us to transfer our digital data to analog signal and in a analog waveform analog waveform mean once this is kind this we can say this is waveform analog waveform okay so this waveform the data will be on uh, on it and we will transfer the digital data into analog signal the analog carrier signal is manipulated to uniquely identify the digital data by carrier so how it happens so i will show you in a um, graph so how we can convert the digital data to analog signal so now coming to the figure and uh, digital to analog conversion let's see first of all sender uh, wants to transfer a digital data to the receiver so sender is sending a digital data receiver is sending uh, is receiving a digital data but what will happen in the transmission path so when digital data is going to be transferred from sender to receiver and we need to be convert digital data to analog so first we can do we we will have a modulator and this modulator will add a carrier frequency this modulator will add the carrier frequency to the with the digital either and this carrier and this modulator will send the carrier let's see this is our carrier this is our analog signal carrier so the modulator will send the carrier towards the receiver once this carrier is received here including this data because this data is available on it so and then the demodulate what he will do the demodulate will de uh, will remove the analog signal from the data and the digital data and the data will be remain there and this digital data will send to receiver and receiver will receive the digital data so this is a basically a process what can that we have a digital data we have a carrier let's say this is our carrier this data will be the head on the carrier using a modulator so this will going to be sent when the re receiver is going to be received and there is more demodulator so the demodulator will demode the uh, signal and the carrier will be removed and the data will be remain here and this data will be received by a receiver okay this is the basically a process how we can convert digital to analog conversion 
So the concept behind the analog, analog conversion is we need to have a modulator which can modulate with, uh, the, our uh, data and we have a demodulator what he can do demodulator will demode will remove the carrier. So the modulator will have a carrier frequency just to keep in mind it will have a carrier and this carrier will be added by a modulator and will be removed by a demodulator. So this is the concept behind it. So a type of digital to analog conversion. So once we are going to convert digital to analog conversion, so we have a different method. So the first is an amplitude shift key, ASK, amplitude shift key, where we can change or we can shift the amplitude of a signal just. The second is frequency shift key, where we can change the frequency we can shift the frequency of the signal then we have a phase shift key so in this we can change the phase of the we can change the phase of the signal and the fourth one is quadrature amplitude modulation called is QAM QAM so in this what we can do we just combine amplitude ASK and PSK so it will max a QAM and which is more important and sufficient for our converting a digital to analog signal okay so one thing we need to be having a mind that in a digital signal we had a bit rate and we had a baud rate so bit rate n is the number of a bit per second baud rate is the number of a signal element per second this is was about a digital signal where the uh, bit rate and the baud rate was change from each other because in a baud rate in one signal element we had a one uh, bit or two bit or three or four and so on so it this concept was about digital now in analog what we can do in the analog transmission of a digital data the signal or the baud rate is less than or equal to the bit rate why so let's see we have a let's see we have a analog signal this is our analog signal so in, in digital signal if you keep remember the digital signal was like this one So we can have it a uh, digital signal this form analog. So how many bit can be in a analog signal? So that's why we can say so bit rate, baud rate is less than or equal to the bit rate, and the formula will be used the same one. So the baud rate is equal to uh, n is a bit rate divided multiply one by r baud. So this is the formula, and where r is the number of a data bit per signal element. So this is just a concept as we studied in a uh, chapter number three. So the same concept will be applied here, but just keep in mind that this thing and it will be proved later on. So coming to the example 5.1, an analog signal carries 4 bit per signal element. How many bit per signal element? 4 bit. Let's see what does it mean? Like, let's see this is your signal element and how many bit it have? 4. F 1000 signal element are sent per second how many signal element 1000 so 1000 you have a signal element and how many bit per signal is 4 so 1000 multiplied by 4 is 4000 simple so 4, but we need to be apply on the base of formula so the our formula is uh, baud rate is equal to n multiply 1 divided by r so what is your uh, so the baud rate is here uh, how what is the baud rate is uh, 1000 so 1000 your baud rate okay and what is r and r is 4 how many bit per signal element is 4 so 4 is here so what we need to find find the bit rate we need to find n so s multiply with R. So S multiply with R is going to be 4000 bit per second. Simple formula and simple calculation. Now coming to the example 5.2, uh, he said that an analog signal has a bit rate of 8000 bit per second. This is a bit rate and a baud rate is 1000 baud. Two thing is known. So how many data element are carried by each signal element? how many data element now we need to find out the data element uh, and how many signal element do we need so signal element is based on a number of a level and how many data element data element how many bits okay 
so in this we have a bot rate we have a bit rate and so we need to find r and we need to find l so okay so as we know about the formula so bot rate is equal to n multiply 1 divided by r okay we need to find r so just uh, replace it out so this will be your formula now just uh, simplify it so this is your 8 bit per bot it mean 8 bit per signal element so what is how many bits we have 8 bits now okay we have a bits now so we need to find we need to find level so as you know about a level l you can be used like this formula 2 raised to power n or you can use this formula r is equal to log of 2 l okay so this is in this form we need to find we need to uh, replace where we need to uh, remove log now so taking an entry log if uh, in the simple ways when we have a this kind of stuff, so 2 will be here and r will be in the power so 2 or n will remain here so log will be end up so just 2 raised to power r which is 8 so this is your number of level how many level you have so this is basically your mathematics now you have a formula just simplify it out prove it out and get your answer so now coming to the our first method to convert digital data into analog signal and the first is amplitude shift key called ASK so ASK is implemented by the changing the amplitude of a carrier what we are going to do we are going to change the amplitude of a carrier let's see let's see just this is your carrier so what we can do we just change this amplitude we just going to amplitude change this amplitude of the carrier to reflect amplitude level in the digital signal this is the first thing for example a digital one could not affect the signal this is just consideration example that one could not affect the signal if once you have a one let's see once you have a one so your signal let's see for one we can say it will be zero so for one it will be always zero then once it's going to be zero so we will say okay for a zero it's going to be change just simple and uh, whereas a digital zero would by making it zero so it's just like a, a imagination but in a actually we will see it later on so the line coding will determine the values of the analog waveform to reflect the digital uh, data being carried so you can see here about the formula so bandwidth of ASK amplitude shift key so the bandwidth of of ASK is proportional to the signal rate so this is the bandwidth is equal to 1 plus D multiply with the board signal rate or a baud rate and these the is due to modulation and a filtering lies between 0 and 1 D is always 0 and 1 where it's going to be modulated and filter so we can be use 1 you can be use 0 but it's, it depends on the condition so we will see in a practical in a graph so what we can take a 1 where we can take a 1 where we can take a 0 okay now coming to the graph about amplitude shift key so binary amplitude shift key binary basically band is used for 0 and 1 that's a binary amplitude shift key you can say amplitude shift key for amplitude shift key let's see we have a uh, we have a data we have 1 0 1 1 1 0 okay and we say that this is called amplitude shift key and we are saying that for a one for a one our signal will be like an analog form and for a zero or for a one we have a amplitude let's say our amplitude is five let's consider it out five so for a one our amplitude will be five okay but once we have a zero data so for a zero we will have a zero amplitude then one then five okay then one so five then we have zero so it means our amplitude is going to be zero so what does it mean it means that for a one we have a high amplitude for a zero we have a zero amplitude so that's called one signal element with the high amplitude one signal element with the zero and then high amplitude high amplitude is zero so if you can see that our amplitude is going to be shift our amplitude is going to change by is going to be shifted by uh, by data by digital data once for a one we have a high for a zero we have a zero okay so simple r is equal to one because just one data and one single element so r will be one 
so your baud rate and your signal rate is going to be equal here because one uh, is a one is a data rate and one is a signal element so that's why baud rate and data rate is going to be same and this is the formula for the bandwidth okay okay one thing more you have to be keep in mind about the band whenever you are going to be talk about the shifting key or NL, uh, NL, uh, digital to analog conversion so we will always take the middle frequency or a carrier frequency which is called fc this is called carrier frequency or a central frequency okay so let's see we have a start let's say we can say start from 5200 let's see we can say like that 5200 so what should be the carrier one carrier will be 75 half of both okay so this is simple if you can just add uh, the simple method that's like it start let's it start from zero it start from zero to 50 so what should be your central or carrier frequency it should be 25 so keep in mind we always take a central frequency for a modulation okay so now you can see here what is your baud rate one two three four five what is your baud rate now five baud rate means your signal you have a five signal element in one second this is one second so and how many you have a uh, data rate one two three four five five bit per second so it means baud rate and bit rate is equal but in which case in a analog case okay so now you can see in this example in this figure implementing of a binary a scheme amplitude shift key so let for a one we have a high amplitude for a zero we have a zero then for a one so if you remember the line coding if you remember the line coding so this is what so this is a line coding stream we have a this signal the digital signal so we have a carrier signal as i told you before we all once we have oscillator so we have a carrier this is our carrier signal so this signal is going to be uh, modulated with the carrier and our modulated signal is this one now now you can see one how many one two and three okay so this signal is going to be combined with the, this signal with the modulator once it's going to be uh, add a modulator with the carrier so so how many signal we have again one two three so for a one we have a high amplitude for a zero it's going to be zero for a one it's going to be high for a one it's going to be high for a zero it's going to be zero so this is simple how you can get your modulated signal this is called modulated signal it means it's already modulated the data and digital say and data is added with the carrier and we got our modulated signal okay after modulation we get a modulated signal so this is about how we can convert digital data or digital signal to analog signal using a carrier signal and modulator so this is the just a uh, block diagram that once we have a digital signal this is your digital signal and we have a multiplier Mul what is the job of multiplier multiplier can aid a digital signal with the oscillator or with the carrier frequency with the carrier frequency so they are going to be combined with this one and at the end we have a modulated modulated signal so this multiplier can be said as a modulator now so this is our sender side basically keep in mind this is a sender side okay so this is a block diagram for the analog to digital digital to analog conversion at the sender side so let's come to the example 5.3 we have an available bandwidth of 100 kilohertz which is spanned from like 200 to 300 kilohertz what are the carrier frequency and the bit rate if we modulated our data by using ASK with the D is equal to 1 we modulated with the D is equal to 1 okay as you remember the formula for bandwidth which, where we had a D and DT and D will be 0 or 1 so here is D is 1 so now for the first thing we need to find the middle frequency because once we are talking about ASK and we have a bandwidth we have a frequency so we need to take a carrier frequency so 200 to 300 so the middle of the bandwidth is located at 250 okay because 200 with the 300 300 and 200 going to be 500 so divided by 212 going to be 250 so our carrier frequency is 250 so we can use formula for the bandwidth to find the bit rate so this is our formula using ASK keep in mind for ASK we have a, this formula for the bandwidth so here we need to find a bit rate okay 
So 1 plus d we have a d, d is equal to 1, 1 plus 1 is 2 as s we have a formula for s which is equal to n multiply with 1 by r ok. So uh, once you are going to simplify this so our result is going to be 50 kbps so 50 kilobit per second ok. So how we can uh, 50 so uh, what is the bandwidth bandwidth is 100 ok bandwidth is 100 r is equal to 1 and 2 is here so 2 divided by 100 divided by 2 which is equal to 50 kilobit per second this is simple uh, multiplication and mathematics. So now coming to the example 5.4 in the data communication we normally use full duplex communication if you remember you are uh, in a, you studied in in your computer that we always study about full duplex communication and at full duplex we need to have a both side communication at the same time this is called full duplex so we need to divide a bandwidth to 2 with the 2 carrier so again we need to be find out the 2 frequency in show and figure 5 point the figure show we I will show you this is a figure so what we have let's see we have a 200 to 300 frequency so what we are going to do we need to be fine two frequency now fc1 fc2 two carrier frequency okay so 200 this is the metal frequency basically is got from here to here so this is your metal so it means it will be your 50 once okay so 50 then 50 it will be 100 so uh, it getting with 200 plus 100 300 so 50 kilohertz and 50 kilohertz so what should be the middle frequency from 200 to 250 it is which is 225 so we always take a middle frequency keep in mind we always take a middle frequency which one middle one so 200 with the 50 250 so what should be the middle is 225 this is your first fc1 first carrier this is your second carrier so in the figure 5.5 the figure shows the position of a two carrier frequency and the bandwidth the available bandwidth for uh, each direction is now 50 kilohertz which uh, leaves us with the data rate of, of two, uh, 25 kilobit in each direction. So now 225 is your bit rate and your bandwidth is 50 and 50 ok. So this is basically a two way communication you have a uh, you have a frequency you have a bandwidth so what you can do for a full duplex communication for a full duplex communication we need to make it two frequency ok so for a two frequency what we can do we can do the middle of it first of all we need to have a one carrier here ok which is going to be 250 so once you find the 250 so between 250 you need to find one then uh, you need to have uh, another uh, frequency between 250 to 300 so you have a two frequency with the same bandwidth ok so now coming to the frequency shift key frequency shift key which is fs key so the digital data stream changes digital data stream changes the frequency of the carrier signal it's simply just about the frequencies of frequency we are going to be changed for example a one could be represented by this way okay and zero could be represented by this one so what he's saying he's saying that once you have a bit one so you need to be aid your shift you need to be aid your changes frequency once frequency is going to be changed so aid the changes with the carrier frequency once we have a zero so subtract your changes frequency from a carrier frequency so here we can see here is going to it's going to be increased it's going to be decreased so it means frequency is going to be shift so now you can see this figure figures 5.6 binary frequency shift key so frequency shift key once we have a one okay so we our frequency is going to be increased okay once we have a zero so our frequency is going to be reduced is here how many frequency here one cycle two cycle three cycle and four cycle let's see our carrier frequency is two let's see okay and change its frequency del f is equal to two it's just supposition not the so what we can do so two will add with the two so it's going to be four so our frequency is four here now so again let's come to here for a zero we have again the same one for a one again we have going to be increase 
increased and going to be reduced. So this is the way how we can make a frequency shift key for a frequency shift key. So it's up to you, your consideration. You can be said that for a one, we can going to be increased for a zero, it's going to reduce. You can say like that, you can be imaged like that. It for a zero we can we are going to be increased and for a one we are going to be reduced so it's up to your supposition and designing okay so the simple thing you have to be in mind that in the frequency we are going to be increased or we are going to be decrease our frequency so this is called frequency shift key so again the same r is equal to one because one signal element with the one bits then our baud rate and our data rate is the same again we have a 1 2 3 4 5 5 bit per second we have a baud rate is a 5 so both uh, bit rate and baud rate is same and the bandwidth the formula for the bandwidth in case of frequency shift key is equal to 1 plus d s plus 2 d f d is change okay so this is uh, the formula which we are going to be used this is the formula we use, we need to be used in a frequency shift key so the bandwidth of frequency shift key the formula which is going to be used b is equal to 1 plus d multiply with the s plus 2 del f del f is going to be changed so the, if the difference between the two frequency f1 and f2 is 2 del f then the required bandwidth b will be like this okay so what he said that the change the difference between two frequency need to be two del f del is the change so coming to the example example 5.5 we have our available bandwidth of 100 kilohertz again the same one which span from 200 to 300 kilowatt what should be the carrier frequency and the bit rate if we modulate our data by using fsk with d equal to 1 okay if you remember the last example with the ASK, the, our bit rate was 50 kbps, but here our uh, bit rate is 25 kbps it's because of 2 delay. Let this problem is similar to example 5.3, but we are modulated by using FSK. The midpoint of the uh, band is at 250. Again, the same, we choose 2 del F to be 50 kilohertz because 2 del F means we need to have a 2 frequency, like in the 2 way duplex communication, so our band is going to be. 50 now or 50 hertz 50 kilohertz okay so due to duplex communication and frequency shift key so our bit rate is going to be reduced okay so the midpoint of the band is at 250 we choose 2 del f to be 50 kilohertz this means that and using a this formula so our frequency is going to be this one so bit rate is going to be 25 kilobit per second so this was your lecture so you guys can watch it out if you have any question so raise it in your comments so i will try to be answer you so thank you for your time see you in the next lecture